goes back at it. This is where we stand. Let me see if I can. So I really can't read that. Ninety-five percent done. Twenty-three hours, thirty-nine minutes. Still two hundred degrees, sixty degrees in the front bed. Ten percent feed rate has not changed. Oh yeah. You can see those. Nice. Nice. Oh, you can see the next part over. <laughs> oh, and it's just coming along. Getting some slight feathered edges. I don't know if you could see some of those, but I mean like tip of, I mean, I'd rub it with sandpaper, I could probably just scrape it off with my finger now, maybe, no, now I'm going to need a little bit of sandpaper, and it'll come right off, it looks outstanding, the strength is unbelievable, the texture is, uh, well, it's 3D printed texture. Pretty smooth though, for what it is. So. Just doing a rest of this uh, update on the long print. Uh, so, 95% done. Gonna be uh, just going through so much stuff, and I'm thinking about add a little voltage display. This guy's. Uh, have fun with that. So, see y'all later, and uh, I'm gonna go get some dinner. Turn on my camera here. Uh, keep the light going. G Tech I3. Dang that flash. Twenty four hours, forty eight minutes. Beautiful, beautiful prints. Point one millimeter extrusion layer. Now I'm getting tips as of right now and some software on the forum for uh, their slicer, their setup. Just trying to show you all the different axes here. Can't focus, I'm close to Now, the ridges that you think you are, um, that you may think are layers are, I believe every 10 layers, it combined the uh, infill, I think I had it set up to. So, I mean, it's really, really thin. I mean, you can get an idea in when I turn that sideways. So just look at the brim, which is the outer part, that flexible stuff. And that's the 0.1 millimeter. And they got spread out on the glass. And I mean, it is thin. Beautiful, beautiful parts. Now, Trusty's trusty scraper. K 
can you see the resolution? Oh yes. Now I still have problems with my end stops. For you, those of you who have a printer like this, I did put um, those questions up on the forum. No, drop the piece. Oh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So, now there's my problem right here on this corner where, I mean, it just gave it just the slightest lift right at the corner. Kind of gave it some good character, I think. So, see the holes? Nice and clear. You know what? That's a good, good one to look at on here. So, as you can see, you no know, support material down the middle. I have one tiny little string, some of these little bits on the side. And I'm just going to rub them off, mostly. So that's all it pretty much takes, in some cases. In some cases might need a, a little... Picking with my nail, but I mean, you tell me. I was getting quality prints like this. Um, with still some firmware issues, but uh, and the only firmware issue is just trying to get that end stock to work, and um, this one. These two will not work. When it does home out, it just keeps clicking like it's not registering. I've tried normally open, normally close. I've tried uh, inverting the the logic on the firmware. I've tried a couple different things on the firmware. So, but uh, wow, that one's really on there. And like I said, that right there does wonders. That wood glue. It actually does so good. You can see a chip in the glass right there from the, one of the removals, and it's actually chipped on the bottom. Go figure. So I simply take one of these, and it's got an uh, edge ground down, kind of like a razor. And then I just kind of hit the edges a little bit just to get it peeling. A little bit of impact helps to, you can hear that cracking coming off. I wouldn't recommend doing that. <laughs> but uh, this is kind of how I do it. Let's see. Now, you can see where I was missing glue. I was missing glue all through right here. I only went out as far as here because I thought this is where it was going to end up. All this is missing glue. And I'll put this back in its um, original position. Or as close to it. Alright. So, it was this whole corner was missing glue. And... As you can see, that's the whole corner that lifted up. Now, the reason why these prints lift, if anybody's wondering, your first layers will adhere good. After you start putting more and more layers on top, the top ones start to contract. While this heat bed keeps the bottom layers warm and, keep, and prevents them from contracting too soon, the upper layers will start getting cool and they'll start wanting to peel up from the edges and you'll get the effects like this as you can see it's curved on the top and flat on the bottom because it was actually printed like this and you can see how it rocks back and forth the curvature and it kind of affects the 
for adhesion afterwards if it's still stuck on there good enough where it's not going to get knocked over um, it prints out just fine as you can see there print it out just fine uh, the final level is at the correct height I can even take this and uh, match it up on there for you so you can see the holes will line up I should line it up correctly my repetier settings uh, I will probably do a little more detailed video on that on the forum for GTEC they have shared their settings they asked me uh, you can look go on there and check it out it's under um, end stop issue so yeah uh, all done and I mean just immaculate um, the teeth there, All right? Oh, I got a little stringage on that one. Actually, it's uh, might just be glue. Okay. So, this is what you gotta make sure it happens. If you see here, these lines. This is the path of your printer. You want to make sure they adhere well. Now here we got that curved piece that's uh, curved on this side for the zip ties. Trying to get some better angles on some of the edges, but I can't do it where I want it. So as you can see, it printed. This it finished first. This it finished second. This it finished third. And the only reason why that one finished third is because the end stop height right here, this one made it the fourth piece. So ideally, I'm printed on all these different multiple levels. Um, my final piece ending in uh, different levels. Nothing moved. Everything stood on the glass. Again, that was 24 hours, 48 minutes, and that time is correct on there. But basically, that's what it took for me to print my whole uh, bracket setup for the Prusa i3 Pro B. It's the X Axis Idler, X Carriage, and Extruder. Uh, X motor, X axis motor bracket. So those are the three items that you're gonna need right off the back. Excuse me, four for this kind of printer. So now that we have our carriage done, I can actually show you that if you have this carriage and the Pro B, remove this piece. And on this piece, here I'll show you the line holes first. You can see they line up right there widthwise. And heightwise, it'll sit like. Here's the camera for my light here. There we go. Sit just as high. And I'm going to redesign this bracket because it's. I'm noticing I'm getting some kind of flex from this, and I want to make sure it's not this. Just excuse me, I want to make sure it's not this, and it's actually the pivot on there. I've been 3D printing literally start to finish, excluding the videos. I could have had this done in one day, and then by the second day, I uh, had most of my settings in. Uh, fourth, third or fourth day, I'd be printing parts like this. So everything's been extended out for me only because of um, life and its uh, issues, of course.
can't tinker all the time. You got things like kids and family, and um, I make it sound bad, don't I? <laughs> uh, I love my kids. Spend time with them. I'm trying to get my oldest daughter into 3D printing. She's uh, 11. Let's just check. Oh yes. I bet you these didn't come that good. Just taking a little piece of belt. Uh, 